Hello and welcome to a wet and windy Vitality Stadium for another AFCB TV preview show. I'm joined by Matchday commentator Chris Temple and we'll be going through everything that's gone on in the last few days. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 2-1 win over Huddersfield Town here at Vitality Stadium. We'll also be discussing the extent of Lewis Cook's injury picked up on Tuesday night. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to the weekend's game against Liverpool here at Vitality Stadium. But first, let's go back to Tuesday night and that 2-1 win over Huddersfield here at Vitality Stadium. Here are the short highlights. There's a one-man Huddersfield wall, which is Alex Pritchard. He's one of the smaller men in their team. He's more of a token gesture than a wall. I call him more a pile of rubble. And it comes from Fraser. They've... Wilson! Onside goal! Absolutely almost the same as last year when Callum Wilson stole in against Huddersfield. They were flat, Wilson was alive and he headed it into the back of the net with exactly five minutes gone. The Cherries on the board here, 1-0 up against Huddersfield. There's one on one of the markers right at the end of the queue. Played Callum on. I thought he was massive offside but it just shows you what the human eye just can't see. Great goal. Well, it's a great header from Callum Wilson, who scores yet again, second game in a row. And Wilson now up against Zanka, one-on-one, one. he's got Fraser in ocean to space, Fraser running onto it, 2-0! Wilson this time the provider, Fraser the scorer, and Bournemouth double their advantage in the first corner of the game here. It came from a Huddersfield mistake on the halfway line, but Bournemouth made them pay, 2-0. Well, it was the KFC gang, Kingy, with the ball. The fantastic pass, Callum takes it in his stride, knocks it across to Fraser, who puts it through the keeper's legs. Works its way back to Aaron Moy, over on the right-hand side now, who cuts onto his left foot and floats the ball into the penalty area. Go the heads, nodded back in towards Zanko, who stayed forward, and then Dequatra's in there as well, and the header's into the back of the net, and it's Congolo, who has halved the deficit for Huddersfield. The Dutchman with his first goal of the season, it looked a bit tame, it just looped towards the corner of the goal, what we talked about, the threat of the set-piece, and Huddersfield are back in the game through Terence Congolo. Well, three headers it took, we didn't win one of them. And he's just lobbed it over the goalkeeper, couldn't get near it. Well, there we go, goals from Callum Wilson and Ryan Fraser saw the Cherries win 2-1 against Huddersfield Town. You can watch extended highlights for free on AFCB TV. Chris, it wasn't plain sailing at all, was it? Certainly wasn't. Um, probably haven't got what they deserved in some of the big games where they've been edged out by the big guns. And then Tuesday night, Huddersfield fans will have made, been making that long journey back to West Yorkshire wondering how they hadn't won it or hadn't at least got something from it, but probably won it as well, to be honest with you. Um, fantastic start. You know, I'm at 2 0, everyone was saying 2 0, 20 minutes cruising, this could be 4 or 5. And anybody in the stadium, I think Huddersfield fans probably would have feared that as well, to be honest, at that point. But yeah, it just, I'm not sure what happened. The, the wheels got unlocked and came off um, after 25 minutes. And then, to be honest, the half time couldn't come quick enough. They got in at 2-1, uh, at obviously, at half time. Um, the goal they conceded was so disappointing. Three headers at the Huddersfield, one in succession in the box. Um, and then in the second half, you know, it was pretty much one-way traffic, really, uh, apart from the odd counter-attack. Um, and to be fair, you know, defensively, they really did stand up. Asmir Begovic made some great saves. Um, Controversial sponsors, man of the match, Steve Cook, with the greatest respect to Cookie, but I think Asmir probably deserved it. Um, him and Nathan Ake, Cook and Nathan Ake, headed everything away they needed to. Um, you know, Charlie and Simon Francis, they they all had to stand up physically after what had been a you know, a lot of ball chasing at Manchester City just a few days earlier, don't forget. So, again, two games, they didn't have a lot of possession, um, but a different way to win. I think that's what pleased the manager. And thankfully, the points column ticks, ticks around from 20 because it felt like it had been on 20 for a long time. And as you said, two early goals there, it did look like it could be quite straightforward. Yeah, and the, the nature of the goals as well, you know, two fantastic goals. Callum, almost like he did last year against Huddersfield, caught them flat, great header, nicely worked set piece. And then, obviously, the wee man, as we've seen him do so many times, you know, bombing on and, and joining the attack at the last minute. Great finish from him as well. Um, so those two, again, proving not just scoring, but assisting as well. Um, you know, Callum's right up there now. He's in double figures for the season, if you include his goal for England, um, which is, you know, it's his best scoring season since his first season at the club already. And we're only in December. So from his point of view, he's, he's He's continuing to catch the eye. You need somebody contributing the goals. And the wee man, like, yeah, I think I said on, on last week's show, I just thought it might be a, to the stage where the wee man might be 
getting like he needs a rest possibly not in the way he's been performing but just because he's played every game um he's played for scotland he really and the way he plays um energetic up and down but to be fair he, he showed he did anything but a rest on tuesday he was he was still flying so yeah it was it was a great start and just a shame they couldn't go on and make more of it to make the game a bit easier in the end and for ryan fraser at seven assists this season now that's more than any other premier league player so it's quite something yeah he's, he's he's passed hazard he's passed all the others who you know the ones you'd expect to be up there um and different types of assists as well you know set pieces of course corners and free kicks you know he, he uh, not the free kick in for callum's goal but also we see assists in, in open play as well so both sides of the pitch as well. He's popping up. He's proved himself two-footed, left-footed goal the other day. Um, so I think that's the, the great thing for Eddie is he's now so versatile. He's not just, a, although he predominantly plays on the left, he pops up all over the place, both sides of the pitch. And that's why he's able, I think, to, to contribute as many assists as he does. And another positive, as Eddie said in his pre-match press conference today, is that they obviously got the three points not playing too well. Yeah, and I think, you know, as they probably deserve something, as we said, from, from Arsenal, certainly deserve something against Manchester United. Um, you know, City was a different different kettle of fish up there. But so, yeah, it, sometimes you don't get what you deserve. Um, Huddersfield will be feeling that now. They'll be feeling like Bournemouth have done a couple of times this season. So it's nice to be able to win uglier in the nicest possible sense. And um, that will stand them in good stead for other games this season. Um, I wouldn't imagine they'll win ugly or you know, be able to play ugly against Liverpool. That will be a different kind of game on Saturday. But certainly in terms of the, the sort of CV of the season, it's a, it's a nice thing to add to it, absolutely. And a word on Aaron Moy as well. Did you think it was a, a second yellow when he made that foul in the second half? Yes, I did. Um, it was right in front of us, just down in, uh, in front of our commentary position, actually. Um, the TV angle actually didn't make it look as, as convincing from the, other, the camera on the other side of the ground to, to what we were looking at in real time from the main stand. Uh, but I just, uh, it, that for, Charlie Daniels was booked for something very similar um, uh, just afterwards or just before. So, yeah, I, I thought Moy just lost his head for a couple of minutes, went chasing up to the referee for his first yellow. Um, and then that was a silly tackle to put yourself, you know, to give the referee a, an option of potentially sending you off. You got a long lecture. Um, personally, I, and Eddie agreed, I thought he should have gone. And one... One of the biggest pieces of news coming out of the game is, of course, Lewis Cook. It's, it's a massive blow to lose him, isn't it? Yeah, a huge blow. And um, first of all, amazing that you finished the game. How did you finish a game with a ruptured ACL? Um, it's amazing. The, you know, the, the steel of the, the lad. Um, Eddie said he, he um, Lewis had said he felt a numbness in his knee. So sort of, you know, he didn't quite know what was wrong. But yeah, um, devastating news for him. You know, six to nine months. It's a huge, I mean, it's the, it's the rest of the season. Um, the key now for him is to get back pre-season. And the thing is, he's got so many people, as have been said a couple of times already, so many people around the dressing room who he can call on for advice and for, to lean on. Um, and just that bit of spirit, people like Callum, obviously, Tyrone Mings, Junior Stanislas has had quite a few injuries. Um, you know, people like that who, who've been through this and, and know the hard road back. He's obviously got Adam Smith in the treatment room with him, at least for the next couple of months as well. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people around who can help him. Um, but yeah, for, for someone of his age as well, who's still trying to make his mark in the Premier League, still trying to absolutely establish himself in this Bournemouth team because he's, you know, he, he has been a, a regular, but he has lost his place a couple of times. So yeah, just and for England under 21s as well, you know, he's a he's a he's the captain of that team, so a huge part of their their season next year as well. So for him, yeah, really really bad news. Um, just shows you how you know what a fine line football has tread because it was an innocuous collision really. Um, the, the Sabiri, the Huddersfield guy that Lewis Cook actually fouled in, in uh, getting that injury, out for eight weeks with a dislocated shoulder from that incident as well. So that was a bad few seconds. And of course, Lewis Cook, as you said, he's going to be around the likes of Callum Wilson, Adam Smith. They can be a, a real big influence on him, can't they? Yeah, and he won't have got. I think he did have a, an injury in his first season, didn't he? Here, so where he was out for a little bit of a, a shorter spell. But um, I think you know he does seem to be the sort of character who will deal with it well. Um, again, the manager's spoken of what a what a great mentality he has. Um, so fingers crossed he'll, he'll apply the, you know, the, the same mentality that he does on the training ground with his preparation for games to his rehab. Um, these days the, the rehab is right up there with the best. You know, they'll be probably flying him off somewhere to have the very best medical treatment, which you know, is, is what players haven't always been able to have. So um, yeah, I, there's no doubt he'll hopefully come back a stronger player than the one he's, he's just left us. And you mentioned earlier it's such unfortunate timing at the start of the season he wasn't quite getting in the team but all of a sudden we're in December and he's made 15 appearances in all competitions. Yeah and him and Jefferson um, I mean it's a, it's a shame in a way that he sort of ended on a game where it didn't quite go their way I mean him and Jefferson they did get dominated a little bit on Tuesday night by by the Huddersfield central midfield so from that point at least they won the game at least he hasn't got off on a, a sort of a, a real downer but yeah he, 
I almost feel bad speaking ill of him in terms of like he's just had a long-term injury, but he probably hasn't been as consistent this year as he would like to have been um, from that point of view. You know, we've seen Dan Gosling come in a couple of times. Obviously, Andrew Sermon started the season. Um, so I think he probably would have wanted to be a bit more consistent. Um, but again, you have to remember how young he is. Um, I keep thinking the same of Nathan Ake, remembering how young he is, that occasionally he'll, he'll have a game where he's not quite on it. Um, but he, he is young. They're, they're 21, 22, these guys. So um, from that point of view, yeah, I think you know now's a, a time for him to, to get fit for next season and really attack it and he's got, obviously got designs of trying to get back into the England set up the full set up as well he's had a little flirtation with it that's going to be his aim to, to get back in there alongside Callum Wilson and in terms of the injury where does it leave Bournemouth in terms of their midfield options because obviously Dan Gosling's Oof. injured Jess and Lowell's playing with tape as well mm. um, central midfield is looking a bit thin to say the least at the moment um, Eddie likes to have two players for every position. He's, so he's had four central midfielders, obviously, for the season. As you say, Jefferson was playing with a bit of tape on his knee on, on Tuesday and obviously had that hamstring issue at, at Newcastle. Um, Dan Gosling, obviously, is out at the moment with the knee problem. As you say, Lewis is now out for a while. So Andrew Sermon is going to be uh, almost flying the flag himself soon. Uh, but no, certainly there's, it's a, it'll be a concern um, when you've got... You're having to now put square pegs in round holes. Um, the manager in his press conference has spoken of people like Junior Stanislas, David Brooks... Um, I asked him whether he'd be happy to disrupt the defensive side of things and put Nathan Ake in there because Nathan Ake has said before he, you know, he had designs of being a central midfielder um, and, and he said if it's the best thing for the team then no problem to put him in there. Um, when you've got other, you know, someone like Tyro Mings that is a, is a perfect replacement for Nathan in the, in the back four but whether, when someone's as strong as Nathan Ake is in the, in the defensive setup, whether you want to disrupt that I'm not sure. Um, that time remains to be seen on that one but yeah in terms of January obviously we'll be a time when presumably Eddie will be trying to dip into the market, but it's not his favourite window. Um, he doesn't like January because he thinks that it's, it's full of often panic signings. Um, players that aren't playing for other clubs might not be sharp. Um, if they're available in January, it's usually for a reason um, that they're not in form or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not an ideal time to be having to bring in cover, um, particularly when you're a top seven Premier League team, because a lot of the teams that you are in and around you in the league aren't necessarily going to want to give you their players. Um, so remains to be seen what happens in January, but I think he, he'll, he'll have to look to bolster options. Obviously, youngsters like Namdi Offerbora and Kyle Taylor and people, they're, they're a bit of a way yet. We might see them featuring on the bench, but I don't think we can consider them as you know coming into the team. And obviously last January, Eddie didn't make any signings, but this year, do you think it could be different and he could, could dip into the market? He might have to, he might have to. He does like to keep the squad relatively uh, trimmed because he... As he says, it's it's uh, a difficult job keeping professionals happy when they're not playing, and there's only so many you can you, know, you can keep uh, happy. So I think he's got 22 senior pros, is how he, the number that he calls it anyway. So from that point of view, he's you know he doesn't add numbers for the sake of it. But again, it depends you know it depends on Dan Gosling um, how long he is going to be out for. Um, you know he he might come back into the equation before the new year. Who knows? Um, but. It's, it's an area he'll certainly have to look at, yeah. Absolutely. Well, next up for the Cherries is tomorrow's game against Liverpool. Let's look back at one of the fondest games here at Vitality Stadium against the Jagen Klopp side. It's a lovely ball. Through it goes. Boris was hesitant. Sadio Mane wasn't. And Liverpool break the deadlock 20 minutes in. Liverpool ahead. You have to say Jurgen Klopp's side have been on top in this one. Arta loses possession. And here come Liverpool again. Slipped into the path of Origi. What's Boric doing? Origi's around him. And that's a lovely finish as well. Arta Boric all at sea. Francis. Bad ball into the channel. Lovren hasn't really dealt with it. This is Fraser. Down he goes. And the referee points to the spot this time for Bournemouth. And James Milner knows he's made a big mistake there. Callum Wilson from the spot. Scores and Bournemouth are back in this one. Mane. Still going Mane. Chan wants it on the edge of the box. Chan gets it. And Chan blasts it home. A splendid third for Liverpool. Fraser. Lovely pass into the path of Callum Wilson. Knocks it back across. Afobe missed it. Comes back for Fraser. And he scores. What an impact he's had off the bench. Well, he won Bournemouth the penalty. And he's now got them back to within one goal of Jurgen Klopp's side. 
He started it with that lovely pass inside of Lovren. And from there, Liverpool never really recovered. Questions perhaps of Karius in the Reds' goal as well. Will it be Wilshire? Will it be former Liverpool man Ipe? And it's Jordan Ipe. Lovren gets his head on it, but it drops back down for Wilshire. Fraser on the overlap. It's a decent ball in. And it's trotted home. Boom of level. It's Steve Cook. Liverpool's lead has evaporated. And with around 10 minutes to play, Steve Cook pulls Bournemouth level with his second goal of the season. Well, Liverpool scored two in two minutes earlier. Bournemouth of two and three here. A long throw in from Cook. Away by Lucas. I will pick up the pieces. Back it goes to Cook, bit of space to deliver. Oh, he goes for goal instead. Carrier spills it, and surely it's going in. It's a sensational turnaround on the south coast, and it's Nathan Ake. 4-3 Bournemouth. Ake second of the season. He scored the winner at Stoke City as well. Has he got the winner this afternoon at the Vitality? I did really well here to draw two Liverpool men into the ball. Created the space for Cook. It's a fine shot, but Carrius again. There's got to be some blame applied to the Liverpool keeper. He's got to gather that in. But Ake reacted. And Bournemouth here have turned this one around. Well, what a day that was. Nathan Ake with the last minute winner there. Chris, very fond memories of that one. Great memories of that day. It's one that I don't think anyone will get bored of thinking about or watching or, or listening back to. Um, just it's, it's still the most amazing game I've ever commentated on um, in terms of the, the turnaround at the end and just the, the unlikeliness of it all. Um, and Nathan Ake, you know, he'll, I'm not sure he'll, well, he probably might score a more important goal in his career, but um, in terms of a more dramatic goal, he probably won't. Um, yeah, just an absolutely brilliant day. Um, but both teams have come a long way since then. That was two seasons ago. Um, it's obviously Bournemouth's uh, solitary win over Liverpool. So very much would like to add it to another win in that column. Um, Liverpool, I think, are a, a, a far better team now than they were two seasons ago, as are Bournemouth. So, you know, it should be a great game here tomorrow um, between two teams who are, you know, Liverpool had to work pretty hard to, to beat Burnley in midweek. They made a lot of changes. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're right on City's coattails. And I think if City weren't so impressive, um, Liverpool would be the ones that everyone's talking about. But actually, they've probably gone a little bit under the radar um, to a certain extent because City are the ones everyone's talking about. Well, you mentioned that Burnley game. Burnley <coughs> obviously took a lead 1-0. Do you think Bournemouth can take any confidence from that going into tomorrow's game? It was a much changed Liverpool team. I think they made seven changes in midweek, um, left out you know, quite a few of their stars, Salah and Firmino, for example, came on off the bench late on to, um, to impact that game. I noticed in their last couple of away games, they haven't scored till over an hour into the game. Uh, away at Watford, they didn't score till I think the 67th minute, and it took them an hour again to score at Burnley um, in midweek. So the, away from home, it seems like teams are able to to repel them. You know whether that's you know parking the bus at home. I haven't watched the, the two games that I'm talking about, so I'm not sure how it went, but. Um, I think Bournemouth have got to start fast. It's, a, it's an obvious thing to say. They did here on Tuesday night and started fast, got the start they needed, and then it all went a bit Pete Tong after that, um, but still won. So I think Liverpool have got so much ability. You know, you look at the players that can't even get in their team. Uh, Salah's been playing down the middle this year, which is a slightly different role to him uh, than he's played in the past where he's been out wide. Um, but last season, there were two pretty comfortable wins for Liverpool, 3 nil and 4 nil. Um, so certainly Bournemouth need to be or will want to be a lot more competitive than that. And one thing that Liverpool have improved this season is they've obviously tightened up defensively as well. Yeah, um, obviously Virgil van Dijk you know, has added a lot to their, to their defensive setup as well. But even people like Andrew Robertson, who's, you know, he wouldn't be the most fashionable defender. And I know he's a bit of an injury doubt at the moment for, for this weekend. But you know, someone like him, a Scottish international, he, he's been a, a really impressive signing for them from, from Hull. He's uh, obviously international teammate of, uh, of the wee man as well. Um, but yeah, they, they've sport for choice. Trent Alexander-Arnold, you know, what a player he's become already. And he's still only very young. So, uh, so who partners van Dijk will be the, uh, the question, I think, because going Gomez obviously is out injured now. He's been playing centre half. They played Matip at centre half in midweek. Lovren's not been getting a look in really. So again, they've got there's three or four players we've named there who, who can't even get in the team. So they've got a, a choice to make um, in terms of who comes into play alongside Van Dyke. But one thing they'll know is that they'll be in a game with Callum Wilson. 
And talking of choices to make, obviously last time Bournemouth played one of the big teams, they changed formation up at Man City. Do you think that will be the case again tomorrow? It's a possibility they could play three at the back tomorrow. Um, at home, they don't tend to see Eddie do it as much at home. I think it's a possibility. Um, Tyrone, obviously, you know, as we said before, was a bit unlucky to be left out on Tuesday, but that was because of the shape. Um, we've said you know, he won't get in as a, at the moment as a second centre-half or as one of the two centre-halves. But if they opt to go with a 3-4-3 at home, um, as I think they have done against the big gun here before, um, then he will come back in, I'm sure. Maybe it will be a very similar setup to Man City, possibly with the, um, with the similar personnel as well. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's hard to know whether you, you, you go on the offensive. You, they need to go on the offensive here, really. Um, but I think Liverpool's threat at home, we saw how they dealt with Man United and how they dealt with Arsenal, gave them problems. Um, so just winning the key moments, again, repeating what we've said the last couple of weeks because they keep playing against big guns and we keep repeating what they need to do, winning the key moments, you know, little, the little set pieces they take quickly, the little moments where you switch off at set plays. Um, Bournemouth have been quite good at defending set plays this season, I must say. Haven't conceded from a corner this season, um, which is impressive. So, yeah, that's the, the fine margins against the big teams. And in goal, Asmir Begovic can obviously take so much confidence from Tuesday night, can't he? Had a great game, really had a great game. Um, the save from De Poitras head of this end behind us at the, at the north end was a, a great point blank save because he was going the wrong way and, and had to go back. Uh, free kick save straight afterwards, a save with his legs in the, in the second half as well. Um, and just generally being a, I can't remember the last time he dropped a ball like, in terms of when the ball comes into the penalty area, and I'm touching wood as I'm saying it, finding some wood. Um, he, you know, he seems to be a commanding presence and that gives the centre halves a lot of confidence as well. So, yeah, he's, he's at the minute he seems to be, you know, uh, a great last line of defence when, when called upon. And actually because he had quite a quiet start to the season, he wasn't really being tested that much in terms of shots. Um, so this time it's nice to see that when he has been tested, he's certainly up to the task. And in terms of our team news, we've obviously talked about central midfield, but apart from that, we're looking okay, aren't we? Yeah, looks all right. Um, no one's come, no one's having, picked up any problems from Tuesday. What I will say is that I think the players were absolutely out on their feet after Tuesday night, having had not much of the ball at Man City, and then a few days later, no one expected them to have as little of the ball as they did against Huddersfield, but you know they were wiped out Tuesday night. I mean, Nathan Ake, I spoke to him after the game, he's having to lean on the wall, I think, and Simon Francis had about a two-hour massage, I think, after the game. So physically, I think they were tested. Um, they'll have been recuperating this week. They'll have been training pretty light, I would have thought, the last couple of days. I think a few of them were in the sea yesterday. Um, I saw a social media post of a few of them that I think played were helping their recovery by dipping their legs in the sea down on the Boston seafront. So, um, yeah, that's obviously the Eddie's magic formula. Go and get some salt water on the legs. And obviously for Liverpool, they played on Wednesday night and obviously with tomorrow's game <coughs> being a, an early kickoff as well, it doesn't give them much time, does it? Not a whole lot of time and they've got a, a very big Champions League game on Tuesday against Napoli where they've got a win to have a chance of going through. So, again, in terms, in terms of what Klopp does with his team, he rotated seven at, at Burnley. I think they'll be a bit stronger for this game, but maybe, you know, they might not all, they might not all play um, because... But in saying that, if they drop any points in the Premier League now, they're pretty much one or two games where you drop points, you're out the title race pretty much. So, um, yeah, I think they'll be, we'll see the big, the big guns playing, but he's certainly got to manage it. You know, I think Eddie Howe's trying to manage a team. Well, he hasn't got a Champions League game on Tuesday night, thankfully. So, um, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see which way, uh, which way they go. And Salah, Firmino, all of those, if they end up playing. They played a Rigi and Sturridge, which is not a bad reserve strike force on, uh, on Tuesday night. Well, it's certainly going to be a very exciting game. That's all we've got time for today. Join us next week as we'll be looking back over tomorrow's game as well as previewing the trip to Wolves. Thanks for joining us.